Hey, hey, beautiful. It's your favorite little keto goofball diamond, and I hope you're ready for your daily dose of sparkling insanity because I come correct. <laughs> anyway, you guys, that tickled my tongue. It really did. Like, subscribe, share, and ring that bell. Uh, uh. Boy, nerves are a weird thing. Um, okay. Boy! Love you too. Now shut up. Alright, it's time. <laughs> My tongue and nose stops tickling. To rant, rave, and misbehave. Keto Diamond style. I should delete that. But stop my tongue won't stop tickling so I want to answer a question real fast because Miss Carol sent me a, a, what, a comment yesterday and she wanted to know how I check for my ketones and all that she's just starting out um, and she asked about pee sticks meters stuff like that now if you've been doing keto for a long time or you've been following me for a long time you know all this stuff so please forgive me because we got new people here sometimes and the information sometimes needs to be repeated because I forget things I already knew in fact, I forget things I wrote and put a website on. I'll go over there and read it, but oh, yeah, damn. But, <laughs> so, sometimes information just bears repeating, right? So, let's talk about the, uh, you don't really have to have anything to test to see if you're in ketosis. It'll make you feel better. It's slightly addictive. Some of it's expensive, especially when you're in the addictive phase. Because <laughs> when you're trying to get in ketosis or you want to make sure you're in ketosis, you'll use all them pee sticks. You'll use them in two weeks. There's 50 of them. Luckily, they only cost about six, seven bucks. But you'll use them um, because it, it is slightly addictive, especially the first go round. Sorry, you guys. Anyway, um, the urine sticks are not necessarily great long term, but early on in your ketogenic journey, when you're just getting into it, if they're reading ketones, it's kind of like a pregnancy test. You either are or you're not. I mean, it's it's if it says you're in ketosis, you're in ketosis, even if it's lightly. Uh, you you want to get just a little bit darker. You don't want to be all the way on the darker end, um, or at least that's my understanding of it as far as ketoacidosis. But if you're new to keto, keto in no way causes ketoacidosis. That is a uh, a diabetic thing. However, some of you are starting out as diabetics, so if you see those really 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 dark things. Perhaps it's a good idea to either get a Keto Mojo uh, to test it to tell or make a doctor's appointment just to make sure you aren't already suffering from keto acid, added, ketoacidosis, which again is not a keto thing. It's a diabetic thing and really, really high levels can be dangerous. Um, that being said, hi, who's coming in? What do you want? Go away. Okay, he's going to go in there. Well, anyway. When you've been doing keto for a long, long time, the sticks become very, very inaccurate because you, you don't pee off as many ketones as you used to. So early on in your keto journey, if you want to use the keto sticks, that with the, the pee sticks, they're just fine. Uh, later, it becomes sketchy at best, and you have to be very careful how you store them. Too hot, too cold, uh, open for too long, they don't, they're not that accurate with that. But early on, a new a new pack that you store properly they'll work great for you don't be too disappointed if you have been doing keto for a week or two and you aren't showing any ketones because you might not some people take three weeks to get into ketosis the first time it just kind of depends on your body what your body's ready for uh, the level of keto you're going for um, if you're being strict keto or not or if you've had a snafu or two because that can set you back 
Now, again, I've been doing keto for over five years, five years and 26 days to be exact. So if I kick myself, I'll be back in in about four hours. It won't, it won't be a great level, but I'll already be registering ketones. <coughs> again, excuse me, I got allergies. I'm allergic to the planet. <laughs> Sometimes I think I really am. But, uh, mm. but anyway, um, if you're new to keto and you want to get some kind of testing supplies, I would recommend the urine strips because it's fast, it's simple, they're very, very inexpensive, like I said, 50 for like six to $10, and you just pee on it, but you know, early on, those are great. If you've been doing keto as long as I have, you'll need something that can register blood ketones, and I do have the Keto Mojo, which um, my kit, it checks both uh, ketones and glucose, so the kit does both, and it comes with the strips of both types, if you want to get one, I do have a link in the description below that gets you 15% off the kit. I'm not positive, but I believe with the 15% off at one time anyway, you paid about 70 bucks for the entire kit, which is not too bad because it comes with, you know, the, the needles, it comes with the um, sticky pen thingy, um, the, the meter, and 50 strips of both the glucose and the ketone strips. Or that's the last time I looked, that's what it came with anyway. And it, it's only for the kits, it's not just for the sticks, it's not just for the meter. So my discount code is only for the whole kit. If you can afford that and you want it, save 15%, might as well. But again, you don't necessarily need anything, but she was wondering how I know when I come in and add ketosis. When I do have the meter, I can check with that. Most of the time though, I rely on my body because my body, I've gotten to know it very well and it's very accurate. If, unless it's allergy season or I'm having allergy problems, if I take a bite of something and five or 10 minutes later, my nose goes, nope, we can't breathe. Pretty much I've been kicked out of ketosis. If I stand up and my knee goes, pop, I've been kicked out of ketosis. What? My husband says hi. They said hi back. You don't know. Anyway. <laughs> What the hell was I talking about? See? I get all messed up. Oh, I rely on my body. If And it depends on what I eat because not everything's going to affect me the same way. I have been kicked enough to gain three pounds and not realized it because it was a very mild kick and I just didn't notice. And also, I have been kicked hard enough to only gain one pound, but to be so sleepy and tired and lethargic. It was definitely a massive insulin spike or glucose spike. It was definitely a, a shot there. It is like, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> you know, or I'm so tired. I gotta sit down. I hurt. Um, pretty much, if if you go into ketosis really good and you start noticing you don't have any brain fog, but then you have brain fog, you probably can kick. If you go into ketosis really good and your body doesn't hurt anymore. And then it hurts after you ate something. Probably a kick. Same thing. Got a high energy level. Suddenly no energy level after eating. Probably being kicked. There are multiple ways. Your body will tell you. Um, there's been a time that I ate one piece of sucralose candy. One piece. And sucralose is considered keto friendly by a lot of people. It's not too great for me. Sometimes I can get by with it. If I have broken my fast already. I can get by with it if it's close to when I broke my fast. If it's been two or three hours since I've broken my fast, I haven't really had anything else to eat and I eat something like with sucralose in it, it's going to kick me. But if I eat like that one piece of candy directly after a meal, it doesn't bother me. I guess I've got enough fat and protein in there going on, so there's that. But I can rely on my body for the most part. However, this morning it was a little bit sketchy. I got up. I felt great. I mean, I really did. I looked down. I felt thin. My belly felt flabby instead of poofy and hard. That's always a good sign for me because I had so much belly before and it was so far out and stiff that now when I bloat, oh, I can bloat. There's plenty of room for air in there and it'll push it right out. So, I mean, it's, it's a very noticeable thing. It's very hard, solid, but when my belly's all goopy and gunky and it doesn't feel like there's a lot of hard stuff behind it, that usually means I have to amazing but I didn't go down as much as I thought I would this morning I did go down a little bit but not what I thought I was gonna do 
and it was kind of upsetting because like I said, I was feeling good. I was feeling, you know, squishy. <laughs> hard to believe I want to feel squishy, but it's better than hard and bloated. So, you know, that was feeling good. I felt like I, I was a little bit thinner. Some spots on my body was a little bit uh, stiffer in, in, in the right ways, like a little less fatty in that area. So I was feeling good. And I was thinking, oh, Miss Linda, today's the day, girl. Nope, mm -mm. she can save her money for another day. Now, Miss Linda, if you don't really want to do this, you don't have to. There's no hard feelings, trust me. But it is like a little motivation factor, so I kind of like it. Gives me a thing to talk about it. For those of you who missed yesterday's video, Miss Linda has said, you know, you get into the 160s, I'll send you $50 PayPal. You get into the 150s, I'll send you $100 PayPal. Like, I bet. <laughs> I, I like money. I don't know what to tell you. Everybody likes money. We can't help it. I like shiny things, and I'm probably going to buy something shiny with it. That or fix something with it that's always broken. Stuff won't stop breaking. I'll tell you about the other stuff in a little bit. But let's go ahead and get into the weigh-in. All right, so here's my weigh-in, and I think I recorded all my foods. Although, after, what I, after eating today, I realized one of the things I ate yesterday, which should be keto-friendly, it's a little sketchy, but it seems like I've had them quite a bit in the past and wasn't bothered by them. However, I can't really remember, you know? Um, my last two or three years have been a little hazy as far as staying in properly. So after I ate it, and it being the only thing that I ate today that I felt a little bit buggy about, now I'm a little bit concerned about those. and It's a lot of damn money to waste because it's a pack. All right, so let me show you what I ate, my weigh-ins from yesterday and today, and we'll talk about it. All right, you guys, it is Monday morning. 171.2 Good morning guys 11 o'clock 1130 Monday morning uh, I've got two um, servings of sausage links they're banquets I've got three eggs fried in coconut oil and a refined coconut oil so it doesn't have a taste or smell salt pepper iodized salt and um, those are over easy over medium what they call them I, I don't know you pop them yellow stuff comes out it's good I call them bubble yellow <laughs> and then I've got some coffee with coconut milk, which does not have a coconut taste or smell either. I forgot to say that it also has two packs of stevia. So uh, people are curious about the ones I'm using. So this is the coconut milk I am using right now. I prefer the non-light one, although this, this doesn't really hurt anything. It's just more water than, uh, than coconut. But... Um, so it says 60% less fat uh, and calories than regular coconut milk but the only difference really is the other one's a little creamier and uh, let's see see I mean literally ingredients water and coconut <laughs> so you know and it's, it's pretty good it doesn't bother me at all it tastes great creamy in my coffee like I said the other one's creamier but they didn't have it this time when I went and the other one the only difference is this one says light coconut milk uh, but the ingredients are the same and this again comes off the international aisle at our Walmart I don't know where you'd find it in your store, but yeah, but I do like this one. Sorry to have it so close up It's just hard to hold a phone and show things. My arms are short too. I got the t-rex arms This is the coconut oil I use now the unrefined is probably healthier for you I'm sure it is and you see I've used most of this I cook with it I put some in a bottle for the bathroom goes under all my smelly places to keep them from being smelly and itchy and all that good stuff uh, as far as weight loss is concerned because you got a lot of loose skin you know so I put some on after the shower which I put some in another container which stays in the bathroom but anyway um, this one the refined has no taste or smell so it's very easy to cook in now when I cook chicken like fried chicken it's really really good with a coconut taste so I could use unrefined in chicken but I don't want to cook my steaks in it. I don't want to cook my veggies in it. Um, I don't want to cook my eggs in it. So I, I use the uh, refined when I cook. <laughs> I got a Taco Bell bowl. Um, it's a power bowl with no beans, rice, or sour cream. Uh, extra chicken. I've got some Diablo sauce I'm going to put in it. I have a zero sugar uh, watermelon monster and some baconette pork skins. Ah, oh, man, they robbed me. There's no guacamole. <sighs> Demons. I got a couple beef patties, cheese, tomato, lettuce, mayonnaise, and a little bit of organic ketchup. Yes, it is Tuesday morning, 171 on the dot. Da, 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 da. It's 
that with the good grief. It irritates me. I don't even like it. I don't know. It just picked it up. It's just now become like a thing. No. Keto, five years, 26 days. On Monday, which is yesterday, 171.2. Today, 171.0. Only down 0 0.2. Current goal is to get down below 170. So, you know, little goals, micro goals, a little bit at a time, baby steps, whatever you want to call it, day by day. It's the current goal. So that's um, 1.2 pounds would take me down below 170. You know, I'd, I'd take 170, but I won't below it. Okay, so what I think happened was, yeah, uh, and it, yesterday I didn't notice it too much. I did feel a little bloaty, but not too bad after I ate. But a little bloaty is usually a sign for me. But today after I ate, I noticed that my nose got stiffer. I started getting a little headache right in here. And uh, I was upset because I think it was the banquet sausages. Everything else was just literally regular plain old eggs cooked in coconut oil, which I've had a billion and one times on keto. I could eat that all day long if I didn't get sick of eggs very quickly. So I mean, one meal a day, I can handle eggs. Multiple, mm -mm. can't really do that. The eggy taste starts to get to me. But, you know, one meal a day, I can handle that. Cheese doesn't affect me. Not at all. Matter of fact, I did eat some block cheese I didn't show you, but that was much later in the day. Uh, and it was literally uh, just sharp cheddar I cut little squares out of. Mostly because Athena kept wanting to bite. 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 Mama, bite. She knows there's stuff in my refrigerator, and I'm going to give it to her. She just tells me she wants bites, and I tell her, what do you want? Cheese. Her and Anthony both cheese. Zach, he get a little technical, but he's a lot older. So, yeah. And they do say words I don't understand, so they probably want something else in there. I just have no idea what the hell it was. So. Anyway, those banquet sausages, um, the little link sausage. Now, I know they're not perfect. I mean, I do know that those are considered dirty keto. If it's got more than whole foods, easy to read ingredients like water, um, pork, salt, if it's got more than stuff like that in it, it's dirty keto. So, I mean, I know that, you know, when you eat dirty keto, you're taking your risk. But, it, like I said, it does seem like I've had banquet sausages before and wasn't affected by them. But yesterday, I felt it kind of right after. I also got a little tired, a little bloated, went and sit down. But today, I really noticed it when I ate them. So, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I can drop more than 0 0.2 tomorrow. Uh, because, but, well, I, also, I did have, um... A power bolt from Taco Bell yesterday. And them suckers, they scammed me. They didn't put no guacamole in it. Well, it was good. But other than that, you know, I mean, the Taco Bell bowl could affect me. It might be a different thing. It might be one of those things I can have at work because I'm working so hard and anything that is in there, I'm going to burn off really quick. But it might be something I can't have during the week while I'm at home. The only way to know for sure is to not eat the banquet sausages and then later have the, the uh, power bowl. Uh, but the, I didn't feel bad after the power bowl. I felt bad after the sausages. What's up, dude? Jacob, I love her. I got a big yellow lab over here, by the way. He wants to go outside. I'll let him out in a minute. Um, okay, there was something else I wanted to tell you about. Okay, so let's talk a little Miss Cutie Pie. Last night, Destiny Brian asked me if I'd watch the kids for a few hours. I said, sure. Of course, Zach ended up staying the night because... He's older. He's easier to deal with. Even if he don't want to go to bed and I can't make him go to bed on some occasions, sometimes he can. But sometimes he'll be standing on his head at 3 a.m. And the, in the complete pitch blackness, he's always had the ability to do that. Like, seriously, since he was 10, 11 months old. Well, anyway, he's eight now. If I gotta go to bed, I just say, don't lock the door for nobody. Come get me if you need me. I'm going to sleep. Can't do that with Athena or Anthony. They're babies. And Athena sleeps in a weird way, and it scared the living hell out of me. She runs cold when she sleeps. Cold cold and stiff. The rest of them sweat to death. That scared me. I, I ain't like it. <laughs> All right, but anyway. Well, last night when they picked up Athena, you know how a man will say, uh, bye, boy, I love you, to their son. They'll, they'll call them boy. Um, my son looks at my uh, grandson and says, all right, bye boy, I love you. And he kisses him. And Athena goes, bye boy, I love you. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. She kept trying to take me to the doctor last night. She didn't know why, but apparently she's gotten into that playing doctor thing. 
where you, she wants to check your chest, your temperature, and all that stuff. She kept asking me if I was sick. And I said, no, honey, I'm fine. I didn't know what she was getting at there. And she kept putting this little toy purse on. Okay, I'm going. You, you go to the doctor with me? Honey, I don't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> Why are you trying to take me? Do I look sick? Is something wrong with Grandma? Do you know what was going on here, babe? Are you, you getting some kind of psychic vibes or what's going on, you know? And she just wanted to take me to the doctor really bad. And by the doctor, she meant walking me down the hallway and back by holding my hand. But anyway, she noticed a little spot on my hand. Just so y'all know, that looks like a teeny tiny little place. It hurts. The whole thing is swollen and puffy. And then that's missing a chunk of skin there. And, and every time I took the Band-Aid off, it burned and burned and burned. But I just had to let it get a scab on it because it, the, the Band-Aid wasn't doing anything but leaving it oozy and gross. So, I had to, anyway, when she saw that, she's like, oh. I'm calling mommy. Go to doctor. I take you to doctor, mama. I take you to doctor, mama. Johnny, let's go. <laughs> Dude, I'm fine. I promise. And today she was talking to me on the phone with something on me. Oh, go away. What was that? I'm sure something was on me. Hold on. I'm not the bravest of sorts when it comes to things that crawl. Or what fly in that case. It was a little flying, fluttery, moth-like things. I don't really think, canterfly, canterfly? In the South, we call them canterflies. I don't know what they really are. <sighs> don't touch me. <sighs> My dog looks at me like, you stupid or something. Yes, yes, on occasion, especially when it comes to critters. Huh, okay, so the kids have been cute. I love when Anthony comes in. Well, Anthony was in here when we got in here earlier. We, we, we went out to eat and took Zach to home, to his house uh, for the night. And uh, when I come in, my daughter's in the shower. Her, fia her fiance is standing back, is sitting back here. And Anthony's running through the house. And he sees me. Mama, you're home. And I get the biggest hugs. I love it. Oh, these kids are amazing. Zach told me he had the funnest time today while we were eating. He played his iPad and ate chicken and fries, you know, kid things. Um, really not sure how, how he had the bestest time with me when we were out eating. Just, but at least he thought it was fun. I tickled him this morning, and he gave me the best um, and, and most accurate description of being tickled. Uh, I, uh, he wouldn't get out of bed, so I started aggravating him, and I kind of tickled him a little bit, and I tickled him a little bit, and I was messing with his ear. I said, is your ear ticklish? Is, is your chin tickle? You know, I was tickling him all over. Are you ticklish here? He said, no, it doesn't tickle. It just makes me panic for a little bit. Well, I was like, you know, that's kind of what being tickled is. Just like a minor panic attack. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not extremely ticklish, but I still don't like it. It ain't fun. It's very unpleasant, so... Children seem to laugh a lot. But, okay, you guys. Ooh. Again, if you want a keto mojo, they're down in the description below. If you want to uh, get some help with your keto journey, my contact information is below or visit ketodiamond.com. Plain, simple, free, everything written out, food, everything. It's all over there. Um, best ways to weigh, the reason why. All of it's over there. If you're worried about cholesterol and other things, all over there. But again, I'll be happy to answer your emails too. So message away or email away. I'm going to go be lazy. Well, after I get this uploaded, probably only in the bathtub for like an hour. Or lay back there and watch TV for like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably back there and watch TV and fall asleep. It's my thing, y'all. It's my thing. Oh, sorry guys. Sorry, it's getting, it's only 10 o'clock. It feels like it's 3 a.m. Anyway, I meant to tell you. Yesterday, me and my dad took my car out. Trying to see and diagnose what was wrong with it. Not a damn thing. Didn't make a single solitary noise. I think I told you that. But today, my husband and my dad took his car, which was going crazy yesterday. The wheel was felt like it was going to fly off of there. They thought it was like a CV joint or a... Uh, bearings, I think it is, or something. And 
anyway, they thought it was something. Well, they took the tires off. Nothing moved. There didn't seem to be a problem. What are you doing? Hi. Oh, this little chicken jumped in the car with me the other day. She hates thunderstorms. She ran outside when we was going to work following us and jumped in the car. It took me forever to get her out of there. Just because she wanted to. <laughs> and little dogs can really get in some spaces when you want to get them out. But, uh, I was telling you. Oh, they can't find a thing in the world wrong with my husband's car. And it's not doing it now either. There's a caterpillar in here. Go away. Shoo. Shoo, fly. Shoo. Don't bother me. We'll figure it out, hopefully, before we go to New Orleans. Honey Bear, will you lay down and be still? You distracted me. I keep seeing you move around back there. All right. Try not to yawn in front of y'all. I know this crap's contagious. Anyway, you guys, much love, many prayers. Do something nice for somebody. Smile a little bit. You never know. Bye.